Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. In today's video, I have some Pinteresting ideas for you. There are three gorgeous styling vignettes that I picked out to try to duplicate, and they were so easy to put together. I'm so excited to show you. So let's get started. The first one is a dreamy little romantic looking setup that is so cute with the bunch of peonies and I love the chippiness in the paint and so this one I definitely had to try. So I thrifted a candlestick lamp for $4 and I'm just going to repaint it and try to achieve the chippy paint look. I'm using white chalk paint and I'm going to give this lamp two coats. You could absolutely take this outside and spray paint. So I just want you to know that when you see a lamp in the thrift store, don't overlook it because it's the wrong color. As long as it is the kind of shape that you're going for, you can always repaint it and make it whatever you want. To give the chippy paint effect, I'm using black chalk paint and a foam brush. This is my favorite way, honestly, to get the chippy paint look because it's just the easiest and it's just kind of artistic and fun deciding the placement of where you want your chips to be. And it, it does look realistic. So give this one a try. If you've never tried this before, you're gonna have fun, I promise. Now here's the lampshade that was originally on the lamp and I didn't care for that much. <laughs> so I am going to rip the fabric off of the frame and I'm gonna do something entirely different. I honestly considered for a minute just leaving it just like this cause it looked kind of industrial, but in the end I decided it did need something on it. And I decided on lace because I like that frame so much. I don't wanna completely cover it up. And so some pieces of lace going around this wire frame I thought would be perfect. So I decided that I wanted it to go on the frame with little tails kind of hanging off the end. So to be kind of shabby chic and play into that little romantic theme that was so pretty in the Pinterest picture. So I cut some lengths of the lace to go around the frame. To attach the lace, I'm going to use a few little stitches. So I started on the back side and I stitched through the most substantial pieces of the lace, which I will show you a closer up view of what that looks like. And so you see I'm just stitching it around that top wire frame piece. When I come to the edge of that piece of lace, I just add another piece of lace. Not so much that they're touching on the middle of the lampshade, but I do want them all connected at the top. So I'm not worried about filling in the whole lampshade. I just want pieces so that those pretty wires show. And then I just continue on stitching. And here's the easy trick that I didn't know until just recently, like within the last year, the easiest way to knot your thread is to hold your needle in your left hand and the end of the thread and your right and you kind of pinch them together and make about oh five to seven wraps around the end of your needle and hold that tight and pull the needle through and you will have the perfect little knot at the end of your thread. Now for the ends of the lace, you want those to be secure onto the frame too. So here's what I'm talking about sewing on the substantial pieces of the lace. That's the pieces where there aren't any bigger holes where your stitches will hold a little better. So I have a few places on this kind of lace where I'm able to put some stitches that will hold pretty well. And I keep sewing stitches on that piece of lace, just like I did the top going around the wire frame. So when I come to the edge of the piece of lace, and that's my final stitch there, I will turn it and end that piece of thread. So I will do my little knot stitch 
which you just do a little stitch right into the lace and loop the thread on itself so that it makes a knot and cut it. So you'll end that piece of thread and with your next piece of lace that you're going to attach to the bottom, you will tie a new knot in your thread and start again. And this is how the lamp turned out. Now it's not the same lamp that's in the Pinterest picture, but in my opinion, I think it's better. Now there is a sign in the Pinterest picture and I am not a sign maker. There are many reasons why, which I'll share with you, but I picked up this little chalkboard sign that I thought would be perfect for this at the Dollar Tree. And so the first thing I'm going to do is stain up the frame with some antiquing wax that is watered down with a, a wet paper towel. You can use the baby wipe method. I just didn't have any baby wipes. So when I don't have any baby wipes, I just wet a paper towel and dip that into the lid of the antiquing wax and apply it just like that. Then I painted in the middle with two, maybe three coats of chalk paint, which here's one of the reasons why I'm not a sign maker. I don't really enjoy painting these insides around frames and such because I don't like to tape things off. That takes too much time. I'm very impatient. I try to do it by hand and I do wind up getting paint on the frame, which has to come off yakety yak, blah, blah, blah. That's one reason why I don't really like making signs. Reason number two is I can't ever seem to get a very smooth finish. So you can see how my chalk paint got kind of gloppy. And so I'm drying it and with my hair dryer. So it'll give kind of a crackly effect because it got too thick in some places. <laughs> so uh, we'll just say that this adds to the charm. And here I am sanding down the unevenness of that <laughs> terrible chalk painting. And I also needed to sand off where some of the white paint got onto the frame. So, but trust the process. It really isn't going to bother anybody in the end, especially if you're just making this for yourself. It's gonna be fine. If you're selling this, I hope you're a better sign maker than me. <laughs> And reason number three that I'm not a sign maker is that I very, very rarely use my Cricut and I wanted this to turn out really cute. I wanted the cute font and everything. So I used my Cricut to do the little words and anytime that I'm doing wording, especially I lose pieces. So I had the little dots over the eyes and the little dot, dot, dot after the word sleep that I lost those little dots trying to weed the vinyl and so here you can see I have trouble trying to get the final to stick onto the transfer paper. And I, I don't know, I'm just not the most proficient at using my Cricut. I haven't got a lot of practice, but this one reason why I don't, it just frustrates me. So I'm applying my decal and I'm gonna have some trouble as you'll see trying to get all of the letters to stick to the sign and come off of the transfer paper, it just frustrates me. But lo and behold, I wound up with a cute sign and since I lost my dots, I went back with a Sharpie marker and I just drew them in. For the rest of the elements that goes in this vignette, I'm just going to look around my house and see that I have some candlesticks that I can repurpose. So here's a tip, shop your own house when you're looking to change things up a little bit or make a vignette or style something different. Just look and see what you already have. And I also saw that I had this little square architecture piece. So here we go, we're gonna put it all together. I had a crochet doily, well actually it looks like it's big enough to be a tablecloth, and I spread it over my table. Then I added the shabby chic lamp, and the decorative architecture piece. And here is a nice white ceramic pot I thrifted for only a dollar. It's going to hold my little bunch of peonies that I just recently got from Timu. 
I'm going to add to that a couple of different kinds of white florals that I got from the Dollar Tree. And here come the candlesticks and candles. And as I was adding the second candlestick, I realized that my pot of plants need to stand up taller. So I put back the little book sack that was on this table for that to sit on. And finally, the sign. And when I look at all of this together, it makes me really, really happy. Here's the Pinterest inspiration on the right and what I came up with on the left. As I was looking on Pinterest for ideas, I came across this piece of art and I loved it so much, I wondered if I could do something similar. But instead of buying a canvas, I decided to paint on the cover of a book. So I thrifted some books, they were five for a dollar and this is just a random book that I thought was a nice size that would be good for painting on. I gave it two good coats with white chalk paint. I went extra heavy on the binding to cover up the wording. Now for some fun, we'll be distressing the edges of this book with some brown chalk paint. And this is a concoction of paint that I mixed up in for my last video. So it's a couple different browns mixed together, but whatever brown you have will work just fine. I like to use a foam brush, but you could also use a bristle brush and you offload some of that paint off of the brush so that you're using a somewhat dry brush and then gently swipe the edges of your book. I feel like you get the best looking results if you start from the outside edge and work your way in so the drag marks are going in toward the center of the book. I put a few marks in the center and now it's time for the real fun, which is adding the essential stencil transfer. I got these beautiful hydrangea transfers and so my inspiration had a hydrangea painted on the front. Well, I'm gonna have a purple hydrangea, but I won't have to paint it. The transfers are really easy to work with. Just remove the backing. Place the transfer on whatever you're wanting to put it on and then use the tool that comes with every transfer pack to rub it onto your object. Then remove the clear plastic overlay and it's done. And I even added a little leaf to the binding. This part is optional, but I used some 120 grit sandpaper to lightly go over the top of the transfer so that it blends in a little bit with that book. And it also makes some of the white chalk paint go over and blend into the transfer. So it all looks very seamless. I tied some jute string a couple times around and added some little wood beads to the ends. And I love how this project turned out. So if you want to get your own essential stencil rub-on transfers, there is a link in my description box for 30% off of a bundle. It is for distressed princess viewers only. So take advantage and go down into my description box and go check out essential stencils because they have so many great things for creative people to play with. And here's our next Pinterest inspired little styling group that I'm going to try to duplicate. I already had some of the items, but the ones that I didn't are very inexpensive to duplicate. 
starting with the greenery now really nice looking greenery can get expensive when you go to buy it at hobby lobby or michael's if it's 50 percent off that's great but sometimes that's still even more than what i'd like to pay so here i have some dollar tree greenery and i want to lighten up that green color and it's really easy to do i'm just going to use some waverly chalk paint in the color celery and i'm only going to paint one side of the leaf so the back side still stays kind of a darker color so you have a variation in colors when you put your group of greenery together so here you can see what a difference that makes the lighter green compared to the darker green that they were originally and very similar to the lamb's ear color that i think is in our inspiration picture next up is the books which came five for a dollar and look at the beautiful coloring of these old books when you rip the front and back off save those because you could craft with those later and the most important part of this is the box which i didn't already have i purchased this at a thrift store for eight dollars and we're going to start building our little grouping And I already had a seltzer water bottle that I have had sitting in my kitchen for a long time. So I'm going to add that to the center. But an alternative to this would be a milk bottle. I think a large milk bottle would be very pretty. My accessories were not standing up tall enough in the box. They were kind of getting lost down in there. So I got some spools of thread I'm going to set my seltzer bottle up on top of. I already had some small size candle holders that I stole from one of my bathrooms to add to the box. And it had to set up on a spool of thread too. I didn't have room for two candle holders like the inspiration, but that was okay with me. Then I realized I had them backwards. I needed to switch their positions. And I saw that my books needed to set up taller too. Now, if I would have had some Walmart bags or some newspaper, I would have stuffed that down in there, but <laughs> I didn't have any of that as luck would have it. So I just wadded up some old t-shirts and it worked just as well. Add our painted greenery and some white hydrangeas that I already had on hand and it looks pretty similar to our inspiration, I think. And as a reminder, here's what we were going for. And here's what we wound up with. The next inspiration picture is perfect for spring. I see this on a potting station or anywhere in your house. I'm starting with the terracotta pots. These are brand new. I bought them from Menards. I have a couple of sizes. The bigger one was like $2.50. I got two of them and the smaller one was $1.50. And I also got the little uh, round plate tray thing that was a dollar something so pretty inexpensive for this set of terracotta pots to make them look older and weathered and like the picture i am going to use kind of a whitewash technique so here i have just my water that soaks my paint brushes that had white paint on them and so it's very very watered down so I'm going to start with that, but then I figured it needed just a little bit more paint. That was too watery. So I got my uh, white chalk paint, and what I did was I dipped my brush into the chalk paint and then into the water and then tapped it onto the pot, and I had more paint that would stick to the pot. Then I took a paper towel and I dabbed it back off, and it gave a pretty authentic-looking weathered effect. 
I did this all over the pots and also on the insides. The Pinterest picture had a little terracotta looking duck and I looked for a duck. I couldn't find a duck, but something else found me. Another swan. This is the third swan in my videos lately. These swans keep finding me, but I found it at the antique store for $2 and it's going to serve the place of our duck. I cleaned it up so I could paint it, and I have this paint that the color is actually terracotta, and I decided to add a little pinch of baking soda to the paint to make it a little gritty. And here's how she looked after two coats, which I think is a little red for terracotta, but anyway, I'm gonna roll with it. I had also planned to put some white wax, and this is my homemade white wax, and I have a video where I made this white wax. I'll link that in the description box below if you want to make your own. It's just clear wax mixed with white paint. And so I added this to the swan and that toned down all that red and then she was mwah, perfection. Looking around my house for the jug, I actually had one sitting on top of my kitchen cabinets. Now let's put together the little sprigs of greenery with our terracotta pots. This is just some stragglers that I've had laying around. I cut them off and I stacked up my pots with some paper towels wadded up in between to make them set a little taller and not just right down inside each other. And then I put my little greenery sprigs around and I liked the results. So let's start putting it together. I have this little side table and I've already got my jug on there. So I placed my pots with the greenery beside it. And the one thing I did splurge on for this little grouping was this $5 stem from Target. And just because I just loved that leaf and I couldn't find anything similar at Dollar Tree. So but if you have greenery sprouting at your house, just go outside and get some real. If I would have had some, that's what I would have done. Then there's a book that goes in the center and mine is a black book. The picture had a gray one. I can find a gray one. Plus it's a piano tuning book and I do play piano. And lastly, our beautiful swan. So what do you think? The inspiration picture is on the right and what I made is on the left and I'm tickled to death with it. So let's take a look back at our three gorgeous groupings. And time for a cute cat video. Thanks for watching. I hope y'all are having a wonderful weekend. If you want to see more DIY fun, click the link that I've provided for you right here and I'll see you next time. Bye.